What's going on, folks? TJ Lowerman, a.k.a. That Sports Gamer here, back with another episode of Bullpen Banter. Episode 70, to be exact. Uh, we're going to be talking about the gameplay and AI deep dive uh, that the devs did over at Sony San Diego about MLB The Show 18. And to join me, I have brought the inimitable Chris, a.k.a. Snaggle J. Chris, what's going on? Uh, not much. It's kind of fitting. I'm here for episode 70. You know, I usually put... At a minimum 70% effort into the show. Some would say a maximum. Well, you know, that, I mean, some days that's definitely true. Uh, but I'm excited, you know. Um, I'm, baseball is almost here. We're, we're getting to that time of year. Uh, I thought this stream was really good, and we're going to talk about it, you know, at length and what we liked and maybe anything that we didn't like. And, but yeah. Yeah, lots. I'm hype. Baseball. Lots to cover. Lots of... Lots of stuff that I feel like we kind of knew, but now we know more specifically, uh, specifically stuff with the hitting engine um, and stuff. Last episode, episode 69, if you haven't watched it, uh, you can head over to youtube.com slash thatsportsgamer. It's archived there. Or if you listen to the podcasts, uh, check your podcast thing for uh, bullpen banter, or you can just go to thatsportsgamer.com uh, and find it and subscribe there. Uh, last episode, I did break down the trailer. And that was what they started this week's stream on, was uh, just kind of going over the trailer and some of the stuff that was in there. Pretty sure I hit on everything that they mentioned. Uh, nothing, there was nothing really super hidden in there, I don't think. Uh, they did not mention any of the new uh, accessories and stuff that we talked about last week. Uh, last last week, man, This the trailer, what, dropped Monday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is a this is your first, possibly your first ever uh, dual bullpen banter episode uh, in one week week in the history of bullpen banter. I think I could be wrong. Well, though. you know what? It's it's well worth it because I mean the trailer had, as I think the trailer seems to do every year, had a lot of you know hidden nuggets uh, with legends and with equipment. And stuff that we know that they are not going to probably talk about on any streams, mm -hmm. you know, leading up to release. But, you know, they kind of leave us to our own devices and to speculate. Uh, and then right after that, you know, we have this gameplay stream, which, again, I felt was a, was a fantastic stream. Um, really, for me, it, it, it checked a lot of boxes. Because um, that's the thing, like, you know, if I'm not mistaken, they let off with the gameplay AI stream last year. I believe so. Um, for the casual fan, it's not sexy. It's not a sexy stream. Um, but for the hardcore users like us and like the majority of the people who watch this stream and who follow our channels, uh, who play Diamond Dynasty on the regular, you know, this checked a lot of boxes for the hardcore MLB The Show uh, fan. So I think, you know, it, it's well worthy of double bullpen banter episode week hype mm. uh question was there anything that you saw in the uh trailer that you would want to go over i mean i did it all last week but i don't, I don't know if there's anything no, specific that you want to talk about oh no, you know what um i mean the biggest thing for me to be honest i like i watched it through maybe twice like maybe three times if you include watching it last night um you know, I do, uh, obviously, I was kind of surprised that they showed off as many new legends as they did. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're talking, what, there was at least, I, I think, eight that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, so that kind of surprised was it, was me. Was it that many? I feel like it wasn't that many, but. I'm, well, I mean, you had the Babe, you had uh, Benito Santiago, there was. Uh, Troy Percival, um, Lee Smith, Doc Ellis. Troy, so what's that, five? Yeah. Uh, Pee Wee Reese six. Pee Wee Reese, yeah. So we're we're getting up around yeah. you know around seven eight. I'm sure Don there's Sutton. That we're forgetting. Oh, maybe maybe it wasn't that many. Um, but my thing is just you know what it's it, like in terms of the trailer. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised they still went and put out a trailer to be honest. Um, I I kind of speculated in in other 
realms that that maybe we weren't going to get a trailer and maybe that was a good thing because they were spending their resource time on you know developing the game Mm -hmm. uh but i like the trailer It, it was good trailers don't really get me excited anymore because you know, it, it, it's fluff, it's filler, it's media stuff. You know, I want to dive in and see what they're going to do with the game. Uh, so I, I watched the trailer and then I moved on and then and then watched the stream, uh, the gameplay stream last night. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about said stream. Uh, first thing they started talking about was the all new tagging engine uh, that includes stuff like the, uh, the setup tags, the running tags, and the standing free tags. Also. Uh, apologies to Tips and whoever sat in the middle chair uh, last night. I know Gil was there, Nick was there. Uh, but they, because of the way this whole overlay works, uh, they're not there. And it's just me and Lance, apparently. So, hi, Lance. He's We're very close right now. There you go. I mean, it looks it looks fantastic. It's like we're sitting next to each other, almost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they've completely overhauled uh, the tagging system. Uh, and it was rewritten by the guy that did the base running engine. Uh, I believe we talked about that a little bit last episode when uh, uh, Ramon did talked about that a little bit with the IGN and the GameStop uh, GameSpot yeah. videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they wanted to remove uh, all the base running exploits that showed up in head-to-head games. Uh, one thing I noticed on Twitter, uh, a lot of people were talking about, oh, they're doing all these changes for head-to-head and competitive play and stuff. Yes, but I think that's just where you see the majority of the exploits. Yeah, but this is just stuff that's going to help everybody, even if you play completely, if you only play offline. Yeah, w- one thing, and, and this is going to be a general theme, I think, for the entire you know review of this stream. I felt like versus the streams that they did last year, their preparedness level mm-hmm. uh, and their bullet points that they had going into the stream. Uh, they were they were prepared for what the feedback slash questions slash community reaction was going to be because you did hear them address that and saying, you know, these issues are going to help in all facets of the game. The reason why you don't see, you know, tagging exploits and things like that in franchise is because the computer doesn't exploit the game. Yeah, it's not trying to take it's not yeah. running through a third baseman to go home, that's just going to be a user doing that, not not the CPU doing something wonky yeah, like that. So I definitely felt like when it came to that one particular thing, and, and as kind of a general theme throughout the majority of the stream, they were they seemed very prepared um, and and had very key things that they wanted to talk about and address, which was I was a huge fan of that. Yeah, I felt like they were ready and. Um, but yeah, the tagging and stuff looks really cool. Again, you know, as an avid online player, it was, it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> was. Year. It was definitely, definitely uh, a big thing last year that caused a lot of problems. Yeah, we all have horror stories of losing games uh, because of a bum tag animation, and you know, it's it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm glad they fixed it. Uh, I'm excited to see how it works in like a you know actual game application i like that they had some gameplay footage and um comparing 17 to 18 but i'd like to see how it works on like a fast full pace game mm-hmm. yeah so i took a i took a couple screenshots here uh, i didn't do like video clips and stuff because i figure if you want to see the video clips they've got the whole stream archived over on uh twitch.tv slash sony san diego studio yep. uh, so if you want to watch it in full action Go check that out, uh, and if you're in the listening to the podcast version of this, highly recommend going to that's youtube.com slash thatsportsgamer uh, and checking out the video so you can at least see the picture, uh, if not watching the whole uh, Sony San Diego stream for yourself. Uh, first up, this is a, this is one where a uh, base runner is diving back into third base, uh, and now you can see that the third baseman is in a much more realistic place, and he's slapping the tag onto the hand. It's not just kind of a phantom tag. That yeah. kind of hopes the runner gets there. Uh, it's a lot more accurate uh, into real life. That's actually one of the things I noticed. This whole stream made the baseball look more realistic. Everything yeah. that I feel like was a problem the last two years really felt like it's been resolved uh, from this stream. Well, and it's and you and I have had this conversation before. Uh, you know, both of us being former former baseball players in real life. Um, some of the things that you know 
like body positioning, things like that in the show was to a, you know, in real life baseball player, you, you knew they were off and things just didn't seem right. And, and, and the third base men positioning on a, on a throwback or things like that was always kind of weird. Um, mm. I was glad to see that, that they fixed that. I, I love that screenshot that you have up right now because, again, it, it looks like a baseball play. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it looks like something that would really happen in, in the run of a game. Um, and yeah, it just looks really cool. It's it's a, it's a subtle little improvement that, again, you know, a casual fan might might not notice, but you know, it, it's a welcome addition. It just adds to the the realism of the game, and again, with the accuracy of the tags mm. and whatnot. Yeah, here's a, another shot uh, of a runner sliding into third base, uh, and you can see the. Uh, the third baseman getting out in front of the bag, laying the tag down. Actually, if you watch the video, when the foot comes in, the sliding foot comes in, you actually see it move the glove. Yeah. Uh, so it's a lot better there. Uh, and in the past, uh, uh, defenders would try to do standing tags when they should have been doing running tags. I think that's more of a that's more of in the rundown situations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, stuff like that is the, these are the little things that bad animations. These were these were costing you bases. Uh, these were either costing you bases or costing you outs uh, yeah. last year. We're actually getting you free bases, I guess, uh, more likely than not. Uh, yeah. Or giving your other your opponent a free base, which could could kill your game. Uh, another big thing we saw last year was where uh, players would like run through third base. Even if the third baseman just has the ball, the guy would yeah. run through the third baseman and go straight home. And your third baseman would be stupid for some apparent reason. Uh, that's supposedly not going to happen this year. They're going to back up and actually make the tag. Uh, you can see it. Here's here's a shot of the second baseman uh, tagging a guy that's just running straight through and not stopping at all. So that's good. I think that was a real big uh, annoyance last year. Yeah. Uh, I saw that a couple times with guys running through third base, and which should have been yeah. easy outs, and you're like, oh, great, easy out. And then, you're, then your third baseman, like, Stands there, and then I think he usually just got stupid after that and couldn't even make the throw home to try to get the out. Uh, that was really, yeah. really frustrating. Yeah, I think uh, with the common theme with all this stuff, it, when it comes to the, the overhaul of the tagging, is it makes the game, you know, takes away exploits that cost people games and, and pushes it back on the skill. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's, you know, what every game strives to have in a head-to-head online environment is making the game so that you know if they you take away the exploits that are non you know sport related and make it about skill you know people aren't going to be able to exploit your third baseman missing the tag and things like that anymore it was handily convenient when you were trying to grind things versus the CPU yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know but you know when it happens to you in a head to head game you you just shake your head and you're like well there's nothing you could do but mm-hmm. Luckily, uh, Sony has uh, has done the job for us. And again, this is stuff that if you're playing offline, you might not have noticed because the CPU would not have just kept running. The CPU would have just slid into the bag. Yeah. So. Yep. Exactly. Uh, what do we got here next? Uh, this is a ground ball to the third baseman with a runner on second going to third. Uh, now, if he tries to make last year when he would attempt to make the tag, if he either if he made it or he missed it. Uh, he would, like, go back to a set position, set himself up, and then try to throw. And because of the way the animation has worked, that was always super slow. And even with a slow runner, you'd almost never get them thrown out at first base. Uh, but now the way they've done all the branching animations and now all the new tags and new throws and stuff, that's not going to happen anymore. So even if he, if he makes the tag or he whiffs on the tag, he's still going to be able to have the wherewithal to get the ball out and throw it over to first base to to get the out. That that was probably the slickest thing I saw mm-hmm. uh, in the stream was the comparison from 17 to 18 of that third baseman making that play. Um, you know, again, a very subtle, you know, improvement to some, but it just adds to the fluidity of the game. And, and you know, we've all had that situation where you have that chopper to third base and, you know, the guy's running and then, you know, a guy with – not even good speed, like a guy with average speed beats that out to first. 
Um, hopefully, given what they've shown here, that's going to be a thing of the past. Yeah, yeah. Two of the things they really stressed uh, in the stream uh, were urgency and efficiency. So now the field, in the the fielders are much more efficient in their movements, and they know the speed of the base runners, and they know if they have to hurry up and get the ball out of their glove or you know do something crazy to make a play. Uh, again, that could hurt you if it's a really, really fast runner and your guys are going to try to do something crazy to make a play, uh, but it's going to help you more times than not because you're going to be able to get plays that you weren't getting last year. Yep, exactly. Uh, what else we got on that? Uh, yeah, they, hundreds of new tag uh, animations. Uh, pickles should be better. Again, as I talked about earlier, they have. Uh, there were times where they were trying to do uh, standing tags rather than uh, running tag animations. So they've redone all the branching in that and done a whole lot more animations uh, there with tagging with the ball in the bare hand, tagging with the ball in the glove. Uh, so pickles should also be a lot better uh, this year. Uh, the next thing they talk about was catcher efficiency, uh, specifically with blocking pickups and branching throws. Uh, the catcher used to, when there was a ball in the dirt, uh, last year you could literally see like where the animations ended, where they would drop down to the block animation, then you'd see them stand up, then they would go to the ball, then you'd see them pick up the ball, and then go into their throw animation. Uh, and if you ever saw that, which you probably saw a lot, because there was a lot of balls in the dirt, uh, it was extremely choppy, uh, and it was an exploit easily taken advantage of online. Uh, literally a ball in the dirt with pretty much anybody running on first base. You could take a, you could take a bag, and it yep. wasn't even that big of a deal. It was, it was pretty simple. Uh, yep. So they said they've added hundreds of new animations to blocking transitions, uh, pickups, and throws uh, to make that animation process seamless, uh, including stuff from the knees. So if there's, like, runner going from second to third, uh, and there's a ball in the dirt, and it drops right in front of the catcher, he will just pick it up with his bare hand and throw it down to third base. Yeah. That's great, especially since we got Benito Santiago in the game. Uh, more stuff from the knees is extremely uh, welcome. Yes. Agreed. Uh, uh, and again, they also, as I said, urgency. Uh, the catchers know the urgency of the runners. Uh, so if there's a, a pass ball and like a uh, drop third strike, if it's somebody fast, they're going to hustle to get over there, pop up out of their stance, make the play. Uh, and if it's someone a little slower, they know that they can take their time uh, and make the play and still throw the runner out. Uh, and all this blocking stuff, this is all for uh, pass balls. But also, because of that, uh, the little like swinging bunts and the little bunts like right out in front of the, right out in front of the, batter's box, like right in that dirt area. Uh, catcher's going to pop up a lot faster, get out to more balls, pick them up, spin, throw out guys at first uh, a lot better. Again, last year, swinging bunts. I feel like all the time a swinging bunt was going to end up being a single just because yeah. nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah, you had that worry um, literally every time it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing with the uh, uh, catcher's covering home plate, uh, this tagging is going to be better, just like the other bases. Uh, so they're going to tag the runner's hands and arms and legs when they're coming in, not just kind of doing like general swipe tags uh, in the vicinity. And one of the things that cost me multiple games last year, I would guess, uh, if you've had guys dive head first into home plate, uh, you will know that they always went like their left arm would come out straight. And then as they got towards the plate, they would pull it back and kind of do like a little Tyrannosaurus thing and then get tagged when... If they'd have just kept their arm straight, they would have touched the base and they'd have been safe. Uh, that's been fixed. Their left arm will stay straight. Uh, and they're going to get in there, hopefully. Hopefully all those uh, games you lost, you can now win because you'll have a proper slide this year. Yep. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, that got that got frustrating sometimes. That, that for me, was probably one of the... Like, in every game, there's nothing... I hate more than losing a game outside of my control. Um, and, and, and again, you know, it, it just makes you not want to play the game. And when, when you lose a game because of a bad animation or a bad transition or a bad whatever, it, it, it makes you not want to play the game anymore. It's frustrating. So, like, again, hope like hopefully... This will, you know, not lead to any other sort of exploits in other aspects of the game. 
Hmm. Um, but again, all of these things, like I've said, it, really, I feel like are going to improve the overall quality of every game you play. Uh, and that is not an easy task when you're considering that this game, uh, you know, has been around for the number of years that it's been around for. And, and to make these what seem on the surface like small changes to fundamentally just make the games play better uh, is huge. Yeah, and I think this is going to be one of those things where uh, now if you, like, go to someone's house and the game just starts auto-playing, you're going to fool more people thinking yeah. that this is real because every, I feel like all the animations that they showed looked 100% more realistic uh, than they were last year or the last two years. Uh so I'm I'm very excited uh, for all this stuff so far. Yep, me too. Uh, next up is uh, pitcher fielding efficiency uh, and covering home pickups and more urgency. Again, efficiency and urgency those seem to be the keywords uh, when it comes to gameplay this year. Uh, pitcher specific animations for dribblers out in front of the plate. Uh, again, they're much more urgent, uh, and there's going to be new setups based on uh, setups for uh, pass balls with the catcher. Tossing back to the pitcher covering. Uh, so they've got all new tag animations and stuff. Uh, here's one you can kind of see. This is, uh, I believe it's uh, Dallas McCaykel slapping a tag down uh, on a runner coming in. So they've redone, pretty. I think they said they redid all the catches uh, that pitchers do at home plate uh, and slapping the tags down. And now they can catch it at three points. They can either catch it early, like as they're running towards the plate, uh, middle, like right when they're getting near the plate, or when they are set up at the plate waiting for the runner to come in and the ball to come to them. Yeah, that's big. Uh, again, it's so, not something that you see a lot in the run of a game, but given the issues that that the game had with catchers blocking pitches and uh, the catcher animations, um, the fact that the pitcher animations were kind of one-dimensional really created a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, this was something that when they showed the clip of it, uh, it's this, this one specifically that you have um, on the screen, when when I watched this clip when they showed it the first time, I didn't actually think he tagged him. Yeah, he did kind of look uh, like he missed and he got his hand up and over. <laughs> I, 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 but but when they showed the replay, it looked like he just kind of like stab tagged him like on the hand. Like, it was an odd angle, but like I think that it definitely caused me a bit of pause uh, because uh, like just quick watching it through, it didn't look like he tagged him, but, <laughs> but on the replay, when they, when they kind of you know, slowed it down a bit, it looked like he might've got him. But either way, the, the fact that they've, they've overhauled that hmm. aspect of it um, is really cool. And, and that, that's a real bang, bang play that, you, that even in real life is going to be hard to see yeah. what, the, what the outcome was. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I feel like, that's huge because if you fix just the catchers and then not this, you would still have the problem of the pitcher standing there and not knowing. I think I've had times where the pitcher slid in or the, the runner slid in and the pitcher would just have the ball and not try to make the tag last year. So, yeah, uh, that's a lot better. Yes. Uh, last year, there was a lot of problems with uh, left handed starting pitchers. If there was a little dribbler out up the third baseline. Uh, they would just lollygag their way over there, lollygag the pickup, and then just lollygag the throw over there uh, and not get guys out, even not the fleetest of foot guys. Uh, so it looks like that's all been taken care of. They said a lot of things like those are all fixed. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't guess it's all fixed, but it seems like a lot of them are fixed, so hopefully we don't see this too much. Uh, they said they really worked on shoring up this area, you know, 10, 15 feet out yeah. in front of the plate. Uh, where the catcher and the pitcher are going to have to be uh, fighting over balls there and making quick pickups and throws to first base. So that looks uh, really exciting. Uh, also, they said, again, efficiency, urgency. So like on a play like this, uh, with a little dribbler out to the mound, if you're playing online and there's a guy on second base, most people are going to send him home. Yeah. Uh, because they know once the first, it's going to take a long time to get the ball to first base. First baseman is going to make the catch. He's going to stop. He's going to start getting into his throwing motion. Yeah. And then it's going to take a while to get home. This year, first basemen are going to be much faster at getting that transition in, uh, receiving the throw, throwing to the next base. Actually, I had a lot of luck last year uh, with Freddie Freeman when guys were trying to go first to third. Yep. 
Uh, I don't know why he was good. I don't know if it was something with his reaction ratings uh, or just his arm strength and accuracy. But I was able to throw a lot of the guys out at third base with him. Uh, but he seemed like... It seemed like not all first basemen could do that, but he was one of them. Uh, that's why I wonder if it's tied to like his accuracy or something. Yeah. Uh, I am thankful that they addressed what I call the Jake Taylor play. Uh, you know, which is the, you know, Willie. Yeah, I mean, you didn't need to have Willie Mays Hayes at second base to score on a dribbler to the pitcher. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm glad that, glad they addressed that. Um, and maybe this is a question for later, but the one concern I have about all this is, is every game you play going to be one nothing? Uh, well, I mean, we'll talk about the hitting engine soon. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This something to ponder as we go through the stream. Uh, you know, what does this mean for the for the overall score of a game? Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is the stuff that these were last year. These were dry. These were leading to runs that shouldn't have happened to start with. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. I just like I said. I just have not necessarily worried, but taking away the stuff that people actually use to score runs, I, I get the feeling like, you know, you're going to need to have a stacked pitching rotation because every game's going to be one nothing. But then also remember they're making pitching harder next year, so yeah, it's going to be true. tougher to be more accurate, so that's true. I think it's going to be a give and take uh, a little bit in everything. I hope so. Uh, again, more moving pickups instead of just set up, getting set up, and then picking the ball up and making the throw. Uh, so that should be good. Uh, smoother, realistic, fl fewer exploits uh, is what they were targeting last year. And granted, these are the videos they chose to show us. Uh, that seems to be the case. We'll see it more uh, when we actually get it in our hands to play with. Yeah. Uh, next up, hitting engine upgrades. Uh, I've talked about a bunch of stuff here. Uh, the cool thing to start it off was they were showing off how uh, PCI kind of works. Uh so this is using, if you're using zone hitting and I guess the standard PCI, which is the round one or the ovicular one. Uh, so if you hit it right in the middle, it's going to be a line drive, medium fly, high, high fly and pop up as you go up, hard grounder, easy grounder and chopper as you go down. Uh, again, the dotted lines are because, you know, if you hit a ball between line drive and hard grounder, it could be either. It's not necessarily going to be uh, one or the other when you get into those spots. Uh, so I thought this was nice. I feel like this is kind of something we knew, but they never really uh, came out and explicitly said. Yeah. Uh, so I was happy about that. Uh, and then they broke it down even further going, uh, if you're using weak, average, or power hitters. Uh, so weak hitters are going to be, they're not going to have a ton of, uh, obviously, they're not going to have a ton of power. Uh, but they're going to be more effective with, if you're able to get the PCI right on it. Or even if you're just a little bit high and you hit the, hit a little bit more topspin, those are probably going to be their most hard hit balls. Uh, and then they'll have like a little bit of contact uh, for easy grounders low and a little bit of contact for medium flies. And then high flies are going to be a problem. So, and then for average guys, you know, if you hit it right in the middle, it's good. If you go up, if you're off a little bit up and down, it's still okay. Uh, but then as you get further away, it's bad, which I guess we all kind of knew. Uh, and then for power, if you hit it in the middle, or if you even hit, if you even hit under it a little bit, uh, you're still going to have very good hits. Obviously, a lot of power. If you're a little bit under it, you're going to get that backspin. Ball's going to because ball's going to fly. If you got the power, it's going to get out of the park. Uh, and power hitters are still good at if you miss a little bit more under the ball, uh, or if you're just on top of them, uh, easy grounders low. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're a power hitter and you're getting under the pitch a little bit, you're going to have more of an opportunity to miss uh, and still do a lot of damage. I was a huge fan of this little part of the stream because if you remember the hitting stream that they did last year to try and address a lot of the concerns that the community had, a lot of people took it the wrong way and felt like it came off as condescending because they felt like it was them trying to explain how to hit a baseball. Mm -hmm. This is how the game interprets how to hit a baseball. Yeah. And, you know, I did see, you know, some, 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 some negative feedback and whatever saying that, you know, Oh, they're, they're talking down to us. Like we don't understand how hitting works. I said that that's not what they're trying to convey. Right. They're trying to explain yeah. what the hitting, how the hitting engine works. Yes. 
how they're trying to explain how their PCI and the placement of the ball in reference to the PCI based on the attributes of the player results in the type of hit that you get. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, uh, I don't think for, again, for, for like for me, it it wasn't a huge surprise. Like I, I, I didn't, you know, be like, Oh, that's how the PCI works. Yeah. Um, this, yeah, this all seemed pretty logical to me. I was yeah. actually surprised that the weak players are actually have a, are okay at hitting balls, like topping balls, and you're still going to get good yeah. contact on them. But yeah, my question is now that they've showed this, is every online game going to be weak pitchers, weak hitters are going to be pitched up in the zone, and power hitters going to be pitched down in the zone? Mm. That's my wonder. I mean, is that not already how the game is, though, to be fair? I feel like a lot of people are still pitching power hitters high. Like, they'll try to sneak fastballs by him. But now they will know, you know, if he hits it, even if you're under it a little bit, if as long as your timing's good, you're still probably going to crush one. Yeah, You know, like like for me, and maybe I'm of the, in the minority, but I don't... Um, typically consider the batter when I, when I'm pitching um mm. I, I I pitch to my pitcher's strengths mm-hmm. and you know, like you know like for example I, I'm just thinking of them off the top of my head but if I'm using you know Marcus Stroman everything is going to be down it's going to be two seamers down sinkers down sliders down like like again I know there are people, you know, they just go out there with a guy who throws 98 and they throw fastballs at the letters all day long. Mm. Um, but, like, I think people need to, to get away from the, like, how do I pitch to this batter and just and just think of how, how does my pitcher handle this situation. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I do feel like some people are going to look at these graphics and be like, okay, weak guys up, power guys down, and let's go. Yeah, I think I think that I think that's just a good way to start, basically. Uh, no matter what, like if you're hitting that bottom of the lineup and they're not good, pitch them up. Worst thing they're gonna do is, unless they're getting on top of one, I mean they're not gonna be doing a lot of damage to you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I feel like if you leave one up to, I feel like you, this, I feel like this is just common knowledge. If you leave a fastball up to a powerful hitter, they're gonna hit the poop out of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now they just yeah. they just broke it down a little more. Uh, so you yep. have to see that. Uh, and now they actually kind of help you remember that a little bit, uh, specifically when you're hitting. Uh, but actually, yeah. So I don't know if you have. You, do you play a lot of home run derby, or have you played a lot of home run derby? I know we played a couple times last year, but yeah, I, 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 I mess around. That sometimes I'll, uh, if if I'm gonna do like a like a seasons run or something, I might do a couple derbies just to warm up, just to get my eyes in the game and mm. see a few pitches. Yeah, so, like, if I had a really powerful guy, I would always uh, aim the PCI just, like, a shade under where it was going to be. Yeah. You know, to try to get a little more lift and elevation, and I feel like yeah. that kind of proved out to be a good idea, yeah. uh, based oh, on this video. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, absolutely. So the next thing is, now they've added a uh, a dynamic PCI, which yeah, I'm gonna say you can't really see uh, uh, in this, but uh, so if you have a low power hitter, uh, when you see the PCI come up, uh, the bottom half of the circle is gonna be lit up a little brighter, uh, so you will know that they're low power. Uh, and obviously, that again, balls up in the zone are gonna be a problem for him. Uh, for uh, average power guys. Uh, the whole ring is going to be lit up because you want to want to hit it in the center. Uh, where am I? And then uh, for the high power guys, uh, just the top border is going to be lit up. Uh, so that should help you a little bit if you're not if you're not really sure who's up. If the guy, you're like, is this guy a power guy? Is this guy a little bit of a power guy? Uh, so you can see that. Yeah. Uh, they spent a bunch. Of, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know how they could have avoided the whole PCI discussion? I know you know where I'm going with this. A, a beautiful wedge that works? Because you got me on this train now for the last 18 months. Just go to the pro Yaku Spirits mm-hmm. PCI of just a bat. I love it. Like that's, I, the I, thing with the, that's the thing that people need to realize is that 
you know, the center of the PCI is not like the optimal place where, where you're hitting the baseball. It's the, the middle of your bat. Mm. Uh, and, and like, I, I was kind of hoping that maybe they would have done, like, I like the dynamic PCI. I think it's going to be a nice little visual cue. Although, I mean, if, if you're... I mean, if you don't know your team. <laughs> yeah, if you're a regular player of the game and you don't, like, you have Cody Bellinger on your team, oh, I don't know if Cody Bellinger has any pop in his bat. Let me look at the PCI. Mm. Uh, you know, but it's just, you know, it's... I, I would have liked to see that big explanation of how the PCI works turn into, like, and here's a cool new PCI to go with it. Yeah. Not just, a more. hey, we're going to shade different parts of it. Yeah. Yeah, I I would like that. I Or I would just like them to show off the wedge more, because I feel like the wedge gives you more of a realistic look. Yeah. Um, but, but hey, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, so they showed a bunch of... Uh, swings with pitches directly down the middle. Uh, and so if a pitch is going to be right down the middle, your good swing timing is going to lead to uh, a ball essentially gap to gap. Uh, and then early and late are going to be more to the left and right fielders and to the line. Uh, and then your very early, very late... Uh, I'm sorry. Gap to gap is good. Just early, just late is going to go from like the outfielder to the lines. And then early and late are going to be foul balls. Yeah. Uh, depending on, you know, other conditions like wind, the stadium, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but again, I feel like that's stuff, all kind of stuff that we knew. So, like, yeah. if a pitch is going to be inside, again, a good swing is going to pull the ball because you want to be out in front of it so that so that V, like, if, they, if you think of it like a V out to the field, which I can't really, I wish I had a thing to show. So if, if the pitch is down the middle, the V is just facing straight out. But if the pitch is inside, you know, the V is going to tilt a little bit. So a good yeah. swing might be more to the center fielder than left center. And more the, the pull part of it, well, if you're using the lefty, the pull part of it is going to be more to the right fielder and just left of the center fielder, not like the left center field gap. Yeah. Uh, and again, if it's, if it's going to be an outside pitch to a lefty hitter, the better timing is going to be to hit it the opposite field. Yep. But again, I thought, I, I mean, again, I, maybe it's just a thing because we've played a lot of baseball in real life and not just specifically video games that that made sense even when they were showing it last year. Because essentially last year they were explaining how real baseball hitting works. Uh, but yeah, I hope now that with the new... Um, uh, the new swing analysis. I have a shot of the swing analysis. I don't know if you can really see it. Let me pull it up here. Uh, oh, that didn't move it. Yeah. Here we go. Here's the swing analysis. You can see it a little better in the center of the screen. Uh, so now not only are you going to have uh, the traditional feedback that we've had in the past, but now you're going to have an animated uh, image of the swing. Uh, and also you're going to see like green, yellow, and red for your timing part of it. Yeah. Uh, is it time? Uh, it's for the swing timing, right? The yeah. contact is still going to be the uh, the reticle and stuff, and then this is for the timing. Uh, so you'll see, even if you are on the early side uh, of good, you will see if you're just off or if you're just late. Uh, so that should be able to help you out a lot to get more locked in uh, on your swing timing. Again, still, if you want to get hits you're, and you use zone, you have to get your PCI on the ball. Yeah. And with power hitters, you can be a little bit under, and you're still going to hit uh, hit for good power. But uh, and yeah. and I agree, I agree that that veterans of the game know all this. The problem that Sony San Diego has is is not everybody agrees with it. Mm -hmm. There is a portion of the community that would like this game to be if you square up a ball, it is a straight dead center field home run. Um, like. Uh, and this is, and you know, we all had this battle and, and discussions and tweets and everything about it last year when, when the hitting was such a hot subject. You know, they have built this game to have a realistic, real-life representation of hitting a baseball. Hmm. Some people who play this game more competitively disagree with the way that they do it. 
and I fully understand their position that they would like the game to be slightly more slanted towards esports, where the outcome of where a baseball goes is less random and more uh, put on, you know, the the skill of the user. So I think this is them reinforcing, saying, "Okay, guys, we've built an IRL uh, representation of." of hitting um and and that's the way it's gonna be and i love it i think it's great i think you know it's not really news um to anybody um yeah i I would hope i think it's just (laughs) no and i think it's just reinforcing saying you know what listen we've built this engine where there is a certain percentage of unpredictability that with a pitch down the middle it could go here it could go here it could go here um you know, it's you're not going to get the same swing with the same result every time. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? That's three analysis. Uh, then they went and they talked about a little bit about physics and stuff. Uh, so it looks like they've cl- fixed up. What were they saying? I think it was like they were talking about like air density was a little off, uh, so balls weren't flying as far as they should have been last year. Uh, and they fixed the again they fixed the exit velocity off. Uh, opposite field hits. Uh, so you shouldn't have that crazy opposite field power uh, still this year. Uh, and they also, they showed a little video where they brought, where uh, Aaron Judge came in uh, and they were showing how if you took a real life uh, exit velocity uh, with launch angle and the same the, a realistic version of the pitch, uh, the result you would get in the game would be the same result that you would get in uh, real life. And I think they showed one of his home runs to left center field and they put the same information into the game and it was like a few feet off of where it was uh, in real life. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yep. Uh, And then last but not least, uh, they have added a a new legend and every stream that they do... uh, Every one of these seven streams, they're going to add uh, a new legend. I believe they said they were all going to be never before seen in yes, uh, it yeah. will be the show. Tips so, did say Tips said they are going to be brand new to the series every stream. Uh, so I will allow you to uh, announce your hero slash kind of heartbreaker because uh, uh, he's going with that Angels jersey. But that's not. I mean, you know. I, I can let that slide. I am I am very, very happy that, that Vladimir Guerrero is going to be uh, not only a Hall of Famer, but will also be in MLB The Show. Um, I assume he's going to be like a later in the season kind of guy. Yeah, um, I think like to get like his beast card, it'll probably be later in the season. Yeah, like I think to get like uh, that, what was that MVP season that he had with the Angels? Uh, uh, 2004, where he had yeah. 206 hits. Uh, a 337 average, 391 on base, uh, 565 slugging? No, 598 slugging percentage. Uh, he was a real good 39 home runs, 126 RBI, kind of beastly. Yeah, you ain't getting that card anytime soon, uh, and it ain't going to be cheap. Uh, but I'm glad to see Vlad in the game. I, I, well, I, I really like to see when they add these kind of players that, like, if you take that, you know, like like any of Vlad's prime seasons and you give them a card, he's kind of unlike any other player, um, you know, because of that, you know, the, the power and the swinging at everything and the arm and, and you know, like the, the five-tool uh, kind of player. Like, mm-hmm. I really, like, again, you know, somebody mentioned um, – I think it was on the stream. They mentioned about Benito Santiago and his rookie card when he had like 20 bombs and 20 stolen bases and he hit like three something mm-hmm. like as a catcher, like that's not a card that you could really find in the game. So like Vlad is one of those guys that he's going to be super, super desirable because he's, there's not really another guy like Vlad mm. actually you can have on your team. Vlad's 2002 season. He almost went 40, 40. Mm-hmm. He went 39 home runs, 40 stolen bases. Did lead the league with 20 caught stealing. Yeah. Uh, but it was 336 average, 417 on base, and 593 slugging. So he's nasty. Yeah. 
He's what gonna if be a, it's going to be an animal card, like for sure? What if, what if I told you, you could get that 2004 Vlad at the start of the season, but it was going to cost you? I I would pay whatever whatever it took. But uh, what if I said you're never going to be able to get him? Uh, but, I could see. I mean, this card, that card's probably going to be like a 99, right? That's going to be up up. I say 97 for sure. I do wonder how this will work. What if, because, I mean, there's the possibility that he is the Angels uh, team collection. Mm, yeah. I Which mean, sticks him, because that's where the, um, uh, was it, who was it, Andre Dawson? Is that the one that was the Nats one last year? I He could be stuck there, and you're going to have to get Trout to get him. True. That would be tough. I mean, if they go with the system from last year, he probably wouldn't even be the Angels collection. He'd probably be the Angels team epic, which would require oh, you to do the yeah. collection and then do... And then do more, yeah. Yeah, like... Possible. It's, yeah. I could see it. I could see that being a thing, though I think he's going to have multiple uh, good cards. Obviously, he'll have the hardware for the 2004. Had a, oh, bunch, yeah. a bunch of MVP seasons. His rookie card uh, won't be bad. No, in ninety, he's, he's gonna have a handful of cards. Probably. Yeah, I can see him getting, you know, at least four, you know, three or four. Give him an impact veteran card in there somewhere for one of his, uh, you know, he twilight hit, seasons. At age thirty-five, he became an all-star with the Rangers. Yep, hit so three hundred twenty-nine home get, runs. Yep, get like a mid-eighties impact veteran, Vlad. Mm -hmm. So that's probably gonna be like, that'd be like a yeah, medium to high gold. Uh, but yeah, Vladimir Guerrero. That's cool. He was on the cover of what was it? MLB 2003. What was it? He wasn't on a high heat cover, was he? Uh, he was also on high heat, I believe. Right? Yeah, I think it was on high heat 2002. Oh, but he, uh, MLB 06. What year was it? It was whatever it was still because it was still called MLB. It wasn't the show yet. Hmm. Yeah, it was one of the old nine eight nine games, right? Yeah, because I had it on PSP, uh, and he was the cover athlete for it. Oh one. Darts in the chat. Oh, says it's a one. I don't know if I believe him. Do you believe him? I uh, I believe everything Dart says. All right, I'm gonna. We're gonna say it's a one. What was it PSP out in a one? I don't. I don't even know, man. Come on, man. You didn't have a PSP up there in Canada? No. They didn't let you have I a, those? I had a Vita for like three months. It must have been 04. MLB. I wasn't, I wasn't into the... I, I had no use for a, a mobile scene. Not like today where mobile is my life. All right, all right. Oh, now Darts is pushing. He's oh, saying now Darts is out. Maybe. Uh, yeah, this is MLB 2005. Uh, it was the PSP game. And then After place this monster MVP season. MLB 2006, 989 Sports. But they had the show in 06, right? Oh, this was MLB 2000... What? I don't know. This Either is back, way, was... back when baseball games had weird name, numbering systems yeah, because... It's on the cover of a game. Yeah. You know why? Here's why it's weird. In March 8th of 2005, yeah. the game released MLB yeah. 2006. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's why it's all backwards. So, so they had MLB 2006, and then MLB The Show 06 was the game next year. I was playing 2K back in those days. Anyway, actually, mm -hmm. I was playing the 2006, like the 06 series. I would have been playing uh, NCAA baseball. NCAA baseball, yeah. MVP NCAA baseball. Baby. That that was the play, obviously. That game was that game was lit. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to hop into? Let's just talk about the schedule uh, yeah. coming up. Uh, this Monday, there will be a GameStop Monday. Uh, then on Thursday, the 15th, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, on twitch.tv slash Sony San Diego Studio. Right? Studio? No S? Uh, yeah. Nothing's what it is. Uh, something, something, something. And the little things deep dive. Uh, so we'll reconvene. I think Friday's better than trying to reconvene right after... Uh, their stream let us let us breathe it in a little bit, yeah. Uh, for a new bullpen banter, uh, so look for that. Look for us to go live uh, 
next week on the 16th uh, to discuss what's there. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at that sports gamer at Snaggle J. Uh, oh, 2002 was his high heat cover. Yes. Is there anything on this schedule that that you're particularly intrigued about? Uh, obviously, Diamond Dynasty, but that's yeah. just that's just me now. Um, I do kind of want to see what they've done to road to the show. It sounds like there's a lot of changes. Yeah. Uh, with this player progression overhaul, people on a bus for some reason, and then people confused about if it's a bus or a plane have you ever seen a bus with windows like that i don't think so uh sure. i do i am concerned tips, tips tips did say it was a bus yeah they confirmed it was a bus because tips it, confirmed it was a bus it was obviously a bus yeah so yeah obviously yeah um uh the one thing i am concerned about uh is that they do not have something for online franchise. Yeah. Granted, they they wouldn't have a stream for online franchise, but I'm more worried that they don't even mention it in the franchise stuff. No, unless that unless those six asterisks uh, is for online. Mm, online is five <laughs> letters, and uh, online is six letters. Sure, why not? Maybe it is. O N L I N E. I don't think that's what it is because uh, no, I don't think that's what it is either. I, I, I definitely don't think that's what it is. Yeah, in the GameStop, um, I believe it was the GameStop video that uh, Ramon did with them. Uh, he mentioned something called phases. Yeah. Uh, for online franchise, uh, for franchise mode. So. Yeah. Uh, that's probably what that is. My biggest concerns um are that franchise mode is not really going to get much other than a few things here and there trade deadline uh, prep bro come on i did say uh and i am on record many many times uh saying that i would like to see them try to add more personality into managing your team and franchise mm -hmm. so i think like trade deadline prep like september call-ups and that but uh, like it's a lot of people in the franchise community are going to be upset because they want a big overhaul and relocation and this and that and this and that. And create a stadium uh, and all yeah, that stuff. and it's not going to happen. Um, I don't uh, like it's definitely not going to happen this year. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, and you know, it's it's one of those things. Um, you know, all speculate. I guess we can wait till March fifteenth and find out. Mm. You know, it's one of those things. I am excited about the road to the show stuff um, because I did feel like, and I think a lot of people felt like uh, it got stale. Um, you know, the, the the RPG elements they added last year were, they were great for, they were, you know, the first time you played through them and then the first couple of minutes. And then after that, they were kind of over and they just went back to being regular old road to the show again. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they say they were going to add more stuff throughout the year to that? And they never did. If yeah, I'm not mistaken, yeah. I believe you're correct there. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, one thing that I am interested in is I don't know if it'll be in a the little things deep dive uh, or maybe Diamond Dynasty. Uh, how they're gonna handle uh, two way players uh, like Babe Ruth and Shohei Otani yeah. when he becomes when he uh, becomes eligible to be in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna interest me because I don't know what you do with Babe Ruth in Diamond Dynasty, if he has the ability to pitch and hit, like, do you yeah. put him in as an outfielder, and then you can never use him as a starting pitcher, so you're going to be kind of screwed when you bring him in? Or yeah. do you make him a starting pitcher, and then the four out of five times you don't get him, he's just on your bench when he should be starting for you? Uh, I hope they kind of go over some of that stuff and how that's going to work. Uh, I feel like that would be important. Um... Uh, I miss the main stuff. I want to see who this new guy is in the booth, especially if the Asterix uh, turn out and it is Jim Tomei. Because uh, I would assume that would mean he's also going to be in the game uh, in Diamond Dynasty. Uh, so that would yeah. be cool. Although, did we ever get a hot fire Dan Plesak card? We didn't, right? Yeah. But I feel like there no. could have been one, right? Yeah. Wasn't there like a couple? I mean, we got a couple Hojo cards. Um,. Or Harold Reynolds, not Howard Johnson. I, I mean, why I get Howard Johnson. Harold I'll Reynolds. take a Howard Johnson card. Look, uh, 
Did you know that in 1988, uh, Dan Plesak was actually 22nd in the MVP voting? <laughs> Just saying. Well, that's something to hang his hat on. I don't know how he did that. 30 saves? Sure. More impressive. That 22nd MVP voting finish or Dan Plesak's shoe game? Shoe game is pretty strong. His shoe game is is pretty is pretty top notch. Uh, I actually we actually did see him uh, uh, when Rich and I went to MLB Network last year to talk about uh, out of the park baseball. Nice. Speaking of out of the park baseball, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. You can go to otpdevelopments dot com. Uh, pre order that now. Save ten percent with promo code TSG nineteen. Uh, all of the promo codes are completely inferior to TSG nineteen. I, I agree one hundred percent. We'll see when the uh, when we're done. Oh, we'll we will get the, we'll get reports, with most, right? With the most, uh, I, yeah. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I think go that's it. Definitely go buy the game. Save ten percent or save. It's like eighteen point seven percent because you get ten percent off for the pre order plus another ten percent for this. Just saying, and uh, you can play it four days before MLB the show. So, like, I mean, why not, right? Or you can wait till it comes out and you can play it the day before MLB the show. I saw uh, Spore talking about that today where he's going to have to get a lot of work done that week, early in the week before uh, Out of the Park and MLB launch. It's unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? We got the Bullpen Banter Discord uh, at thatsportsgamer.com slash BB Discord. Uh, I think we got like 120 people in there now. Uh, chatting get in there. MLB the show all the time. Uh, what else? Twitter's at that sports gamer at Snaggle J. Uh, you can find the show. Uh, here on twitch.tv slash that sports gamer when we go live with it uh, archives over at youtube.com slash that sports gamer uh, if you want to listen to the audio version uh, you can just search your favorite podcast app of choice uh, search for bullpen banter uh, and you'll find it uh, or you can go to that sports gamer.com slash bullpen banter that'll give you all the subscription links uh, and it'll show you uh, the playlist with all the videos uh, including the video that should be there which will be the latest episode uh, Snaggle J, you got anything else? Nope, that was you covered it pretty good. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to be good at this stuff, and uh, you're, you're doing you're doing a fantastic job. Knock it all out of the park. Uh, Aha, oh, uh, I see. Cross promote, cross promotion. I see I, what you did there. I see what I did there. Uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for tonight. Uh, we did have one question in the chat, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was, says, uh, "What's this guy got to do to get Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker in the game?" Oh. Uh, I mean, never. Don't even bother. We're gonna have to see if they have a veterans committee that would maybe get these guys in. Uh, yeah, because I don't think they're going in the traditional way. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't hate them. But hey, you know mind, what? I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind a Whitaker. We got Trammell's s- just Trammell's just white noise at shortstop. Yeah. Oh, uh, one thing I did want to mention. Uh, uh, they showed some throws from shortstop. Yeah. Uh, again, urgency and efficiency. Hopefully. The thing that was happening two years ago, uh, where if you had a bad shortstop, you were kind of screwed uh, if they didn't have an arm. Uh, hopefully yeah. that's fixed now because it looks like they're going to be getting to balls and picking them up better uh, and making those throws to first. So you might be able to get away with someone with a little bit lower rated uh, fielding and arm strength this year. Agreed. Which is good because I was kind of getting really, really tired of having Buddy Bell play shortstop for literally the whole year. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, I think we're good here. Uh, Chris, thank you for joining me. Always appreciate it. Anytime. I'm glad to be back for, what is it, season three now? Season three. This is episode Man. 70. I can't believe we are it's... Old. We are old. We're getting old. Uh, we're getting it's real old. Not, it's not good. Uh, so what do we say? They have, uh, GameStop Monday to look out for next week. Thursday is going to be the stream over at twitch.tv slash Sony San Diego studio. Uh, and then I think Friday we'll be back. Uh, with another episode of Bullpen Banter. And uh, that would mean now is a good time for you to get out of the bullpen and get into the game. Take it easy, folks. We'll see you again next week right here on twitch.tv slash thatsportsgamer.